Hello everybody and welcome to SQL on the Edge. This is episode number nine, Azure SQL Database Threat Detection. I am Warner Chavez, SQL Server MCM, Microsoft Data Platform MVP, and I work at Pythian. Make sure you visit us at pythian.com. So the topic for today is Azure SQL Database Threat Detection. This is a new feature on Azure SQL Database and it's part, I would say, of the kind of like the new wave of security features that Microsoft keeps adding on the cloud. So first we had uh, full-blown TDE on any uh, tier of SQL database. Then they came up with the new features like dynamic data masking, row level security, um, always encrypted, and now uh, threat detection. So threat detection, the way it works is it's really tightly coupled with auditing. You have to enable auditing and then once the audit logs are being written, there is a service under the covers. We don't know, we don't have to manage it, we don't have to do anything about it, that will analyze those logs and then will look into possible threat patterns either in logging usage, either through SQL injection or any other type of unusual activity. And if there is anything that is being found in the log that is unusual, then it will shoot you an email and let you know that something is up. And at that point, it's your responsibility to go in and check what's going on with your database. Um, at this point, it's uh, in preview, but it can be activated through the portal. And um, if anything, like I said, if anything actually happens, the emails are being sent out. So the service is operational. It's just that currently it's in preview at the moment. So let's check out the demo. I'm going to show you how you can activate this right now on the portal for your database. Let's take a look. Okay, I'm connected right now to my Azure portal and I'm going to navigate to a database that I want to activate the auditing and the threat detection. So here on the left hand panel, just go to SQL databases. I'm going to find my database that I want. It's called T1. Note that these features are available in all the service tiers for Azure SQL database, including basic. This one is a basic one. So on the right hand panel right here, there's a section called security, you guys can see. And uh, there's the option here for auditing and threat detection. Now here, the auditing and threat detection is going to give me an option to just inherit the auditing and threat detection settings from the server, or I can activate it specifically only on this database, which is what I'm going to do right now. I do not want to inherit it. Uh, in this, uh, at this point, I'm just going to say the auditing. I want to turn it on. And now it's going to give me an option to use either table or blob storage. Blob storage is in preview right now. It's not yet uh, in uh, full general availability. And it's going to be basically a more high performance, uh, finer grained audit um, type of option for Azure SQL DB. So it's a, it's a blog post and a video topic for, for another day. For now, we'll stick to the generally available table storage. I have to pick up my storage account here. I already have one created called Warner Lab Storage. Here I can select the audited events that I am interested in. Um, of course, if we are going to be doing threat detection, we at least have to have the plain SQL, parameterized SQL, and store procedures. Logins and transaction management, uh, they would not be analyzed for a threat detection. But in this case, I'm going to just leave everything on so you guys can see it. And at that point, it just says threat detection. It's on preview. Is it on or is it off? I'm going to turn it on. And now let's see the options here. It says, what type of threat detection types do I want to see? And it's going to tell me all or SQL injections, SQL injection vulnerability, a logging from a new location, or an unusual usage pattern. Now, the exact definition of what each one of these is looking for is not published, so that it's not as easy to try to come up with uh, ways to circumvent the uh, threat detection. So I'm just going to leave all of them selected. And uh, I'm going to say, you know, I want to send alerts to um, my admin address here. I'll just put my address. And we'll say, you know, email, service, and co-administrators. And at this point, I, everything I've selected is, uh, is good to go. And I can just go and hit save. All right, and at this point, my database is enabled for auditing and for threat detection. Now let's uh, throw some queries into it and see what the service does. 
Okay, so let's do a quick refresher on some of the most uh, basic patterns of SQL injection that you might see. For example, here we have an example query that is just doing a select from a table where an entity ID equals a value. And let's say we have a date predicate like and date part uh, is 2014. Now if I run this, it'll return one record just like any application would do. Now the problem is if you have an application where some of the predicates, let's say for example entity ID equals 10, are not properly parameterized and they actually receive the input as a string and then do concatenation. Because what happens there is that say a user will pass in instead of just an ID of 10 and especially with the web applications that receive parameters through the URL where you can literally type anything, um, they could write something like 10 semicolon end in the original query that came with the application then insert the SQL they want like let's say drop table and then insert the comment uh, characters so that the rest of the SQL not necessarily will execute and this will parse correctly. So in this case for example this is what a completed statement would look like once that SQL is injected into it. Now if we run this we'll be able to see that it does parse and execute. Here it's actually the permissions of the application that saves us from the user being able to drop the table. In case that um, the application also is not really friendly to report errors and lets these uh, web server errors bubble up all the way to the user, then they could get a lot of details about the application and the server itself as well. So let's say for example if they inserted something like insert into, they could try to get um, their own credentials inserted into the database or create extra users when they shouldn't be allowed to. So in this case again through a select statement that got injected and insert into the users table, we can execute this. And again, it's the permissions of the user itself, the one that saves us from being able to actually put more data in it. However, again, if the application would let this error bubble up all the way to the user, then the user would know that even though he doesn't have access to the users table, there is indeed a users table, right? And finally, for example, there's a lot of other things that we consider harmless or sometimes people don't really think it's a big deal, but uh, they just give uh, a potential attacker more information. For example, if they simply insert a select at at version as part of their injection, and then again, we run this simple select statement, then suddenly uh, they could get as part of the output the information of the exact version that the backend is using and then tailor their attack to this type of backend specifically. And finally here I just wanted to show this is what the emails look like that come from Azure. They will tell you a potential SQL injection was detected on your database and give you your uh, full database fully qualified name and your server fully qualified name and they will give you a timestamp of when the SQL injection happened. At that point obviously we recommend that you go back, review your audit logs, review that everything in your database is okay and then start looking into where that vulnerability might have come from in your application. Alright, so I hope you got a good overview of how to activate Azure SQL DB and uh, a little bit of the refresher that I did on some uh, on some very basic SQL injection patterns. Remember this new feature works with any tier of Azure SQL database so there's really very little downside to activating it unless you have a really really busy Azure SQL database server that you know the audit logs might get really really large but other than that there's really no reason why not to activate it because it does require a storage account to have the audit logs in it. And remember, this is a reactive threat detection. It is not proactive. It's not going to stop a, a, let's say, a SQL injection from happening. It's only going to tell you after the fact that this might have happened. So hopefully in the future, we'll have a an evolution of the service where it's actually proactive instead of just reactive. But at the moment, it's better than, it's better than not having anything else. So I would say still, good practice to just activate it anyway. And in general, think of this as just one of those other security features that you can use, especially in the cloud where your database is out there uh, outside of your own data center. All right, so stay tuned for more episodes and thanks for watching.